Welcome, my Mahjong friends. So glad you can join me. Tonight, we're going over the new card. I'm so excited that the card is here and we have lots to learn together. I have been practicing and putting together my presentations and trying to learn the new card myself. So it is here. We are discussing the year category with this video and learning it. Each clinic, I'm taking apart the card and teaching you the categories. So check out each week my clinics to learn the new card. I'm teaching you ways to learn. I also have on my YouTube channel to learn the new card. I have Let's Learn the Card. So check out that playlist on my YouTube channel, Majan Class. I also have worksheets that you can purchase for a fee on my uh, channel, Mahjong Class. Just go in uh, Google search and type in Mahjong Class on my website page. I also have new card workshops that you can take either virtual or in person if you live in Monmouth and Ocean County. We're going to use I Love Maj to do our practice tonight and to learn the card. It is a fabulous site to play on. Typically, I Love Maj gives you two weeks. I'm giving you three weeks. They gave me a special code to use. So use the code CB and you can get three weeks for free, which should give you perfect amount of time to learn the new card. You can also go on and register and pay a monthly fee. It's very um, minimal or you can pay for the year. Maybe not buy one coffee and you can uh, pay for your monthly subscription. <laughs> What I'm working on for next week is learning the card again, and we'll move on to the Any Like Numbers category. We'll talk about what's old and new, or what's confusing, and we'll talk about how to change the hands, some tips and tricks on the new card. So you won't want to miss anything, so please make sure you subscribe, and then click the bell and click all, so that you'll get notifications on when I post new videos or I go live. I want to thank those who have been supporting me, and they've been supporting me in a couple of different ways. You can go on and just subscribe, as I mentioned, and click the bell. And this is all free to support me. You can share my videos with your friends by clicking the arrow and copying the link and sharing with your friends. You can give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. And most of all, I love the feedback in the comments or suggestions, or maybe what you would have done in the situation based on the game we're playing. I also want to just give a shout out to my super supporters. And again, thank you for being a supporter. Every week I play with everyone on I Love Maj at one o'clock, that's Eastern Standard Time. And we play a game virtually online and our cameras are on and we're chatting. You don't have to have your camera on. You can have it off however you want to participate. This is not a learn to play game. This is a real Mahjong game, except we're playing virtually online on the I Love Mahjong platform. It's a great way to uh, play if you can't get out or if you're just enjoying some time together uh, virtually from different people in different places. As you already know, each week I have a YouTube live clinic at 6.30 on Tuesdays. So join us because there's always something new to learn. So let's get into I Love Maj and we'll start playing on there. So I Love Maj and it's a fabulous website and it's a perfect place to learn the new card and to play games. So we're going to go to play game launch and we're going to do a little warm up and learn the new card. We're going to scroll down to the exercise room and we're going to make a hand. We're going to do sequential order because it's the first time we're looking at the 2023 category, the year category. So let's start the exercise. And we start with line number one. The first thing you want to note is the num the colors. It's three colors, so we have to use three suits. However, read the parentheses. It says to any two suits. So don't be fooled by the white here, which is blue on your card. That is not a suit. Remember, the white dragon is has a dual purpose. 
It can be used as a matching dragon to the dot suit, or it can be used as a zero. When it's used as a zero, you can use it with any suit. So this, you may think you need three suits, but in this hand, you only need two. And you get to choose the two suits from the three that we have. So let's build this, and we're gonna start with the first suit that's on your card in green. I hope you have your 2023 card pulled out. And here we go. So I'm gonna start it with cracks. I need a pung of twos. And for those of you who don't know what the word pung means, that means three of a kind. That's same number, same suit. Now I need four zeros. And remember, as I just mentioned, we use the white dragon, which is no longer the white dragon. It is now a zero. This is not a suit anymore. It's just the zero. Now we have to change suits because we went from a, to a different color. So these twos and threes, since they're in the same color, have to be in the same suit. So I've already used cracks. I have to use a different suit. So we have dots and bams available. I'm gonna use dots. I have to use a pung of two dots and a kong of three dots. A kong means four of a kind, same number, same suit. When we complete this, you can hit validate and you can see if you did it correctly. Now, I wanted to mention that these did not have to be dots. We could have used bands, but it does have to be a different suit. So let's validate. And we got it correct. Let's move on to line number two. Again, we see three colors, three suits. Read the parentheses, any three suits. Remember the zero, again, you, can, you have to use the white dragon, but it does not have to be used with the dot suit. So we need two flowers. Then we need to make 2023. Let's make that in cracks. So we have a two, a zero, a two, and a three. Now we move on, it changes colors. We have to change suits. So let's do dots. We need a Kong of twos. And then we need to change suits because it changes color and we need a Kong of threes. We, always, we already used dots and cracks. Now we're gonna use bams and put in the threes and validate. Next hand, line number three. You see three colors, you need three suits. But wait, read the parentheses. It says 2023 can be in any suit. The pungs can be any dragons. So this is kind of like in any hand. You have to have four flowers, a kong of flowers. You can pick any dragon you have in your hand. So let's build it with white. Then we can pick a suit that we want. It can't be the dots or can it? Remember we just read any, it can be dots. So let's do dots. 20, 23. Now remember, you have to use the white dragon. We have four white dragons. So you could do this hand with the white dragons. Now we need another dragon. We already used the white, so we have red and green left. You do have to use two different dragons of the three we have. So let's use red. And then you click validate. Congratulations. So before we leave this hand, I just want to mention, you could have made this with green dragons here. You could have changed the two, zero, two, three to bams. It would have been a two bam, a white dragon, which is now zero, a two bam, and a three bam. And you could have had green dragons here. You just have to use any two dragons of the three we have 
and then the 2023 can be built in any suit. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, sometimes the colors do kind of confuse you a little bit because of how we all learned. If it's three colors, we have to use three suits. But the parentheses always supersedes what the colors are. They put the colors on here to help you distinguish between the groupings and where you need to change suits. But again, in the parentheses, it says 2023 can be in any suit and pungs of any dragon. In this hand also, before we leave it, let's talk about where we can use jokers. We can use jokers for our Kong. We can use jokers here for the Pung. And we can use jokers here with the Reds. In the 2023 grouping, they are single tiles and you cannot use jokers. So just be aware of that and know that even here, we could have put a joker in. In Kongs, you can use up to four jokers. In Pungs, you can use three jokers. And again, in singles, even though they're pushed together and they look like a Kong, but remember the definition of a Kong is four of the same. Two, zero, two, three are not the same. So you can't use jokers there. Let's move on to our fourth hand. In this hand, again, you see two colors. Read the parentheses. Any two suits, pairs of twos may be in any suit. These two colors, they're just saying your pairs of twos do not have, they can be start with any suit. So we have crack spam stops, we could start it with any suit. But the two and three at the back end does have to be in a different suit. It's interesting how they worded that. It's a little bit confusing, but that's why you're on here and that's why we're learning together. So um, one of the things I always suggest when you get your card is to read all the parentheses and to build the hands. And that's why we're on here building the hands because you don't wanna be in the game and it'd be the first time you've seen a hand when somebody puts it up and you're like, where's that hand? This is gonna help you to put it in your mind and hopefully you'll be able to recognize them more easily. And at least you've built it once in your lifetime, whether you ever play it again, um, who knows? But also I want to mark, mention that is a concealed hand, so we can never expose it. You have to build that hand in the privacy of your rack uh, without putting up anything on top of the rack for calling for anything. So if you make this hand, um, it's concealed. And also, I should mention, you should highlight all the concealed hands or put a C on the far left. We read from left to right, so you're never going to look to see if it's concealed or not. You're just looking for a hand. If you play concealed hand and you call for something, so say you call for the pung of twos in this concealed hand, you will not be able to win Mahjong on that hand because you've already exposed something. So you have to keep that hand in the privacy of your rack and play um, not calling anything. It's a little difficult, but sometimes you have the tiles and it's super easy. So let's build this hand. So the twos again can start with any suit. So let's start it with um, cracks. We do two, two cracks, a pair. Then we need the zero, which is the white dragon, which is not a dragon anymore. It is a zero. Then we need to spell the word news. For those of you who love the word news, this is where it's at. We have it back this year. So we're gonna spell N-E-W-S. And then we're gonna go ahead and now we can't use cracks. We have to use another suit. So let's use bands and we need three, two bands. And then to end this year hand, we need a pair of threes in the matching suit because the colors match. So um, this hand is a good Mahjong and you can hit validate. Um, before we do that, let's talk about where we can use jokers. We can't use jokers in the pairs. Remember, no jokers with pairs. This is a Pung, so you may use up to three jokers. The uh, grouping N-E-W-S looks like a Kong because it's four, but it's pushed together and those um, Remember, a Kong definition is four of a kind. These are not four of a kind. It's a single north, a single east, a single west, a single south. 
So therefore, we cannot use jokers in that grouping. We can use jokers with our pung of twos up to three. And in our pair of threes, we cannot use jokers. Two times you can use jokers here in the pungs of uh, zeros and in the pungs of two bands. Everything else, no jokers. If you're playing a hand that is concealed, you still have the ability to do joker exchanges. You just don't put anything up on your rack. When you do jokers exchanges, you don't put up anything anyway. You just, when it's on your turn, you just exchange for the joker and you put it in your rack. So you can still do joker exchanges. And obviously in this hand, you have two groupings where you can use jokers. So let's validate and move on. We're not gonna go on to the next hand. There's only four hands in 2023. I do wanna mention that there's two other spots on the card that 2023 does appear. In the Winds and Dragons section, line number four, there's both A and B. You can make it with North and South or East and West. And then also in the Singles and Pairs category, it's the big hand that everybody looks for because it's worth 75 cents this year. And it is um, all 2023 in each suit. So you do have to have uh, three white dragons, which is used as a zero. And then you have to have all the twos and threes in all the suits. So good luck in making that hand. I did not make it last year. It's the same combination as it was last year. Although last year, 2022, big hand was in uh, the year category. They moved it back to singles and pairs uh, so that you know you cannot use jokers in any of that line or that category. So good luck in making that hand and let me know if you do because it's a fabulous hand to make and again wow your friends. So we're going to exit out of here and you can again if you want to practice a different you can change the section and pick a different section. I only wanted to do the first section tonight and you can do all the other ones. I suggest to you each day, just doing one section and practicing. The other thing you wanna do is you want to change your card. I should have mentioned this sooner. You should make sure you have the 2023 card and not the 2022 card. So we're gonna stay on the 2023 card and we're gonna exit out. Back, you can change and do some of the other exercises. We'll go over them in future classes. But for now, I just wanted you to try just making the 2023 category. And again, once you go through it once, you can come back out and do random and practice um, randomly working on the 2023 if you wanted to do random. Let's get into the game and play with the bots. I'm gonna use standard because I am just learning the card and I don't want the bots to outsmart me <laughs> and we're gonna launch the game. We're not gonna be open to live games. Make sure you change your card 2023. I have my timer off and we're playing level one. Remember, we're gonna sort by suit. Oh, look at all these dragons. Let's play a dragon hand and let's see if we can do 2023. Remember, we just discussed line number three. It's four flowers and dragons, dragons, and a 2023. We don't have the white, so let's see if we can get it. Let's get rid of the one, the nine, and the north. Well, we got a flower, perfect. But we are in the Charleston, so we have to give up here. So let's give up the east, the south. And this is going to be crazy, but I am going to give up a green because I have a joker and I can call for it. I'm trying to get 2023, 20, and I don't know which one I'm going to get. So let's give up a green. We got nothing. Let's get rid of these three. Look at what we got, woo woo, <laughs> how exciting. I am gonna give, um, oops, I hit continue. Oh yeah, we're on the second left here, sorry. I'm gonna give up the north, the nine, and I'm gonna give up another dragon. 
I'm trying to get this 2023, um, and I'm trying to obtain the other two. So let's see if we can get it. We got nothing. We received nothing. We're on our last right. Look what we got back. Perfect. So I am now just going to do two tiles. I'm not going to push it anymore, passing another green. I don't want to use all my jokers, but now I can call for that one that's out there. So let's get um, rid of the one and the north and see if we can get a two. We got the red. This is so awesome. So I am not going to decide which one to get rid of, the two or the three the two BAM or the two dot. We're going to work to see what the computer gives us. Um, we have 99 tiles left. Let's see. There goes one soap. We're looking for a two. And we're going to call for that green dragon. We need a, a pung of green dragons. We can always use a joker with the green if nobody discards it. But the key here is getting the, oh, there's our green. Let's call it. Actually, let's not because that's going to force us to pick uh, bams or dots. I'm going to let it go. Remember, there's one more green out there. We picked a three, but we already have a three. We don't need it. The more you expose, the more people are able to figure out your hand. Okay, now here's the other green. Let's call it this time. And I'm gonna put up my pong. Now I have to commit to either bams or dots. Seems to me people are throwing out dots. There's only one bam. Let's keep the dots and let's get rid of um, the three. Oh, three bam is already out there. Hmm. Let's get rid of the two bam. Oh, good thing we didn't play bams. Good choice. Let's get rid of three bam because we can't play that now. It's hard to figure out somebody's hand with just one exposure. We're going to wait and see um, when they have two exposures, we might be able to figure out their hand. Now I can call for this flower, which I'm gonna do because we are set. We're just waiting for the two dot. I am putting up two jokers, which I don't normally do because this will give my opponent an advantage by taking the jokers, but we don't need the jokers. So let's call this and make a Kong. And now we're gonna get rid of the two crack and we're waiting for the two dot to make 2023. This was an interesting hand. Ah, another joker. Yikes, we don't need it. So I'm going to throw people off. I don't think there is another hand with, let's see if there's another hand with four flowers and dragons. Let's see, four flowers and dragons. There is no other hand with four flowers and dragons. Nope. So let's just get rid of the joker. Everybody knows what hand I'm playing. They just don't know what my 2023 is. I hope, oh good. I was worried that Dottie was playing uh, like numbers with twos. Um, that was a little nerve wracking for me, but um, she's playing two, four. Now is she playing to, I know we have Mahjong, so we're going to call that in a second, but I just want to talk about if we were in the game, I would be trying to figure out Dottie's hand. So immediately I'm going to go to a 2, 4, 6, 8 hand. But when I go there, there's no Kongs of 2s with Kongs of 4s in two different suits. So then the next place to look is consecutive run. It's 2 and 4 in two different suits. I love hand number five in consecutive run because it's so versatile. And that's exactly probably what she's playing. 
It's line number five. It's um, two. She's missing three bam and four dots with two flowers. Quinton just put up nines. I have no idea what he's playing. He could be anywhere. But here, for sure, you don't want to throw flowers to her and you don't want to throw the three bam. But it doesn't matter because guess what? We won Mahjong. So that hand kind of was like really fed to us. I am playing level one with the bots. So it is an easier level. They're not as competitive as um, regular people. But I'm also teaching you and teaching myself. So I wanted to keep it a little simple on myself. Um, if you've tuned into my other clinics, I do play level two intermediate. And that is a little difficult. We don't win that often. I couldn't even imagine playing advanced. But we'll see. I do consider myself a pretty good Mahjong player. But who knows why the bot, you know, they're bots. They're programmed to win. So we'll have to see how it goes. When you do finish each hand, go around and figure out what hand they're playing. Don't look at what's here. So they're playing five, six, seven, eight. When you see a run like that, that is in consecutive run. Then you just have to find the line. That is line number two. The person across from me is playing six, seven, eight, nine, which also is the same line, but playing with different numbers. Um, Dottie is playing two flowers, two, four, and remember she was looking for the bands. So she was pretty far away. She doesn't have any three bands, but I guess she could have used a joker or two if she got them. So, you know, you never know where you are in the game. This was pretty quick. We got it pretty fast. And we got 25 um, points if you're in a tournament or 25 cents if you're playing for cash for that hand. And it looks like Quinton threw it to me. So in a, a home game, um, Quinton would owe me double. So Quinton would owe me 50 cents and Marjorie and Dottie would only owe me 25 cents each. On this, they play uh, tournament rules, I believe. And so I would have got 25 points for the hand. And then Quinton would have got a negative 20 points because he threw my winning tile with two exposures. So uh, it's a little different when you're in a tournament. Each tournament has their own rules and you have to just follow what is on your card and how you score. So let's start a new game. Sort by suit. That was perfect that last hand since we practiced the 2023 category and we played a 2023 hand. So that was perfect. So now we have pairs of sevens. That's where we always focus on our pairs. And then you have to say, well, what goes with sevens? What categories can you play sevens in? If you don't know your categories, learn them. This year, there's 10 categories, which is one more than the previous year. They're the same categories from the year before, except this year we have the additions hand, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. Those hands are just merely a play on math. The plus and equal signs kind of mean nothing, but it creates a pattern that you can remember. One plus one equals two, and we'll talk about that in another lesson, but I just wanted to mention that it is the 10th category. So if you don't know your categories, pop on over to my other video on learning the categories. And I have some great ways to learn that. And you have to learn the categories. It's the basis of the game. So when I say where can you use pairs of seven, you should immediately be able to list them. So you can use pairs of sevens in like numbers. You can not use them in the addition hand this year. You can use them in sevens. You can use them in consecutive run, 13579. Oh, and look, Winds and Dragons. There's line number two, which is a run of numbers. So you can use sevens there. You cannot use it in 369. We can use it in singles and pairs. But singles and pairs, you have to have like a whole bunch of stuff. We barely have anything. So let's use our sevens. And let's see, should we play odds? Hmm. You don't have a lot of odds. Let's keep the upper numbers. Ending consecutive run this year, your upper numbers have to be 
um, usually you collect around four numbers, but if you look at my number four, that has five numbers in it. So let's collect five numbers around our seven with our tiles we have. So we're gonna collect four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we have four, four, five, oh, we have them all. So now we're in a pickle. So we know we're not playing the West, and we're probably not gonna use this four because most of them are two suits and um, I don't think we're gonna use that four. And if we use this four, five, uh, we need four, five, six, seven, eight. We're not gonna use this eight. So let's start with this and see what we get. I always keep our dragons, although in the consecutive run category, Line number three and line number eight are matching dragons, so we're probably not gonna use them. So if we wanted, we can pull back something and pass a dragon, but let's hold them for the first pass and see what happens. Okay, we got a south. We did get an eight, so maybe we're playing four, five, excuse me, four, five, six, or five, six, seven, eight. We, um, also got a seven, so we can play seven, eight, seven, eight. And this year the seven um, numbers in the same, repeating, excuse me, I was trying to think of the name. Repeating this year, repeating numbers is line number six and there's no dragon in it and no flowers. So we can play seven, eight, seven, eight. So let's keep, we're gonna get rid of the four Maybe we'll play, um, it would be, if we played line number four. So four, five, it would be four, five, six, seven, and we don't have the other eight. And we need to keep this. It would be four, five, six in cracks seven in bands and eight in dots. So let's get rid of this four. And I think it's time to let go one of the dragons. Let's get rid of the red. Oh, we got another eight. So maybe we are playing that hand. I think it's looking more and more like we're playing the seven, eight, seven, eight hand. So let's get rid of the four. Now we picked up a six and another five. We don't need these. I mean, we could keep the six. We could play, oh no, that's a different suit. We could play five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, or five, six, seven, eight. Let's continue. And let's get rid of the five, the nine. And the reason I was holding on to the green is there's the third hand down. It's two flowers. And then it's two numbers in a row, which this is an oldie hand. It's been on the card for many years. I think it hasn't been on the card in the last two years, but it's a fun hand. It's one of my favorites also. So it's two flowers and it's probably, I got to tell you, I learned back in 2012, it's probably on that card. I have to go back and look, but that's probably why I like it because I learned on that card and the hand was there. So that's why I was keeping that. Let's get rid of this six dot. We, um, this is our second left, so we do have to pass three. Oh, we picked another seven. So that hand is really coming together. Oh, we have a five now. So let's get rid of the eight, the green, and this is the across. So we could play five, six, seven, eight. Let's get rid of this six though, because I'm leaning more towards the seven, eight, seven, eight. And we could pass a flower, but flowers are all over the card this year and a lot of pairs. I don't wanna give somebody their pair because if I pass this and they only have one flower and then they get their pair, I just made it super easy for them. So let's get rid of the six. We got six, four, and five, we don't need it. We got the red back and we don't need these, so let's get rid of three. Oh, 
We're into the game. We did not get anything we need, but prioritize your discards. Any of these are good to get rid of. I'm not really that interested. I don't think we're using these fives unless we get some sixes. I think we're playing that seven, eight hand. We can always move over to like numbers with um, flowers, seven, sevens or eights and eights. There are 99 tiles on the table. Let the tiles dictate where to play. Yes, have a hand in mind, but don't commit to it right away until you get rid of all of the unwanted tiles. So let's see what happens. And we're now we're into the game. There's our first eight dot. We need four. So either way, we can't call for it. And remember the pattern in this hand is three of a kind, four of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind. And again, it's called Pung Kong Pung Kong. This is a pattern throughout the card. It's one of the easier patterns to make. I call it a simplistic hand because you can use jokers in every grouping. So even though we need this eight, we can maybe get a joker and we can call for the next eight dot. So let's um, ignore it because we have to, we can't call for it and keep track that it did go out. Oh, we got another five. Interesting. Let's get rid of the ones. Oh, yay, we got the eight. Let's get rid of this one. So um, I don't think we're going to use the fives, but what I'm going to do is get rid of the five cracks before the five bands in case something else comes up where I have like five, six, seven, eight. And you can also use them for joker exchanges. You can release one and maybe somebody will call for it and put up a joker. And then you can exchange on your next turn. Again, keep getting rid of those that are less important to your hand. And then start going into um, the ones that you thought maybe you would use. Uh, we're not going to use the six dot. Uh, we could play five, six, seven. Hmm, that's an option, but there's too many choices. Let's just get rid of it. If you change your hand too many times, you're going to confuse yourself. Now here's a seven dot. So we only need a pung of sevens because I remembered the pattern, uh, three, four, three, four. We have a chance to get the other one, so we have to ignore it because we don't have jokers to be able to call it. Look what we got. So we have to use this we know for sure in this grouping, so I always place it where I have to use it. Otherwise, if I didn't need it here, I would use this as a marker and put it off to the side and just leave it there. Sorry, I just didn't move it right. Uh, leave it there so that I knew that was my marker. But I know I have to use it with the eights and I have to call next time an eight dot comes out. So that's where I'm putting it. So now I know I'm not really using these five, so let's get rid of them. Oh, nobody needs those five bams, bummer. I was hoping we can get a joker out of the deal. Doesn't look like anybody's using fives. Well, we got a white. We can keep that and see if that helps us a little bit for a joker swap. Maybe somebody will put up white dragons. Oh, let's hold the other dragon just in case. I don't see any. I just see the red dragon out. The sixes are all out. Oh, yay, another joker. Perfect. Now we're ready to call for our eights. We could use the joker for our seven. So let's see how it plays out. Here's our seven dot. 
one already went out, we can call for this with a joker, but then that means we're putting up a joker that somebody can do an exchange. I'm gonna let it go. We already have our sevens, we don't need it. And don't forget, if we pull up a seven, we can get this joker. Nobody's throwing flowers at all. That's a little concerning. Okay, let's hold on to our flowers. It's a little dicey. Nobody's, well, actually, let's throw out a flower now. I'd rather do it now with 18 tiles left than, you know, uh, later on. Let's see. Oh, maybe we can get that joker. Ah, uh, bummer. You should be figuring out Quentin's hand. He has six, seven. So six, seven are consecutive. So he can be playing uh, line number five in all one suit. He does need that flower. So I don't know if I'm gonna throw the next flower. Uh, let's throw the three. You should be figuring out Marjorie's hand. She has four flowers and twos. There aren't a lot of four flower hands, but um, there are a few. And it looks like she probably could be playing either any like numbers or line number one in two, four, six, eight. Oh, bummer. So he was playing six, seven, eight. So he did um, get that. We were looking for seven, eight, seven, eight. I don't think that any decisions I would have made would have changed anything. We still were um, a few tiles away. Now, over here, uh, Dottie was playing east and west with dragons. She had all the dragons, that's why they weren't out. So we were safe to discard these. And Marjorie was playing four flowers, two, four, six, eight, which is line number one which I assumed uh, she was playing uh, in addition to any like numbers. But I think a lot of twos were out. So you probably could come to the conclusion she wasn't playing like numbers. So congrats to Quentin. And uh, you did learn a new hand, seven, eight, seven, eight. And we were pretty nicely going on our way, but it was getting to the end of the game. I was hoping for a wall game because if you can't win, no one else can win. That's a good game for you. Let's start our next game. Sort by suit, and we have a run here, one, three, let's do all the odd tiles. I'm gonna keep even the four in the dots, but let's do an all one suit hand. I am gonna keep all the odds if I can. Um, we're gonna usually do one, three, so let's get rid of this three. We have a one, a five, seven. There is the closed um, hand but it doesn't use flowers. And we don't have any jokers. Let's look over at singles and pairs. There's the very top hand, it's two suits. It's one, three, five, seven, nine in two suits. Let's try to build that. Although I don't wanna pass flowers. So let's get rid of the four. We have a three and an eight and a red. In one, three, five, seven, nine, there is one hand that uses, oh, two hands, excuse me, but an opposite dragon. There's one hand that uses matching line number four. So that would be the red dragon with the um, cracks, but we don't have a lot of cracks. We have more dots. And then the hand with the opposite dragon is line number five. Now, put a little box around those dragons because typically dragons are at the end. These are kind of um, in the middle. So you want to make sure that you recognize that they're there if you're looking for a dragon hand. So we can play one, three with the opposite dragon, and then we can play three, five 
I don't think we're going to use the dragon. Let's get rid of the dragon, the three, and the eight. We're going to continue. We have a west, an east, and a one. Although, if we're going to play that singles and pairs hand, we need this one. So let's um, do that. And singles and pairs, we don't need the three. We only need one three. Let's try that singles and pairs be a little crazy and adventurous. We have no joker, so let's do it. This is our over. I want to keep all these tiles. Crazy, I am going to pass a flower. I have to pass three. I don't want to give up anything. We had, ooh, we got our nine to match. Awesome. We don't need the one and the red. Excuse me. <coughs> this is um, our last right. So you don't have to pass three. I mean, you have to give the person three, but you can do a blind pass. So we're just going to pass two. I don't want to pass a flower again because that would be two flowers that I passed out there. That one was even stretched and I don't like to do that. So let's just pass two and see what we get. Uh, we didn't get anything, so let's do two across. We got the white and the three. And, oh, yay, we picked up the one. This is awesome. Maybe we can play that singles and pairs hand. We need another one and another nine. And we need the three. So we need three tiles. Let's see what happens. We have 99 tiles to gear us towards what direction? Oh, of course, we get a joker. So I will, I will discard a joker if I'm playing a singles and pairs hand. But, um, but it's only one joker. If we get two jokers, then I'm going to switch hands. <gasps> we got the one. This is so sweet. So I'm probably going to discard that joker because I want to win that singles and pairs hand. We need a nine dot and a three crack. So that's what we're looking. Oh, here we go. They must have heard me. <laughs> And let's get rid of the joker, and then we're looking for the nine dot for the win. Again, please remember that I am playing on the simplistic uh, or beginner line. So the robots aren't as smart. They will discard tiles. Um, if you play intermediate, I don't know if I would have gotten this hand so easy, but it's fun to try. We don't need this nine. We're looking for the nine dot. We already have our nine crack. You still probably want to do joker swaps if you have the tiles because you want to take that opportunity away from another player to be able to do that, even though we don't need the jokers. Uh, we might be in a little bit of a pickle. Oh, no. We need, they're playing, I think they're playing 3-4, three, 3-4. Four, three, four. So they need three crack, which we already have. That's good. And then they need the four bam, which we don't need. Oh, we try to figure out their hands. The other hand they could be playing is line number four. They can be playing one, two, three in bams, and then four and five in dots. We're looking for a nine dot. Come on, nine dot. They're playing four five. So that's that Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So it's probably four, five, six, seven, or it could be two, three, four, five. So far, nobody's showing the nine, so nines could be in our favor to get the nine dot. It doesn't seem like anybody needs that. Come on, nine dot. <laughs> Yay! So we just won on singles and pairs. No hand is off limits when you play on the card. I know there are some people who say, oh, don't play them, they're too hard. Don't play the concealed. 
I play the whole card. That gives you the most ability to win because um, you have all the flexibility in all the different hands. To mention singles and pairs, uh, I don't know how many of you are visual, maybe next week I'll create a slide, but singles and pairs, they are like a bonus line to each of the categories. So if we wanna look real quick at singles and pairs, the first hand that we won, uh, we just won, which is so exciting. Um, that actually could be in the category of one, three, five, seven, nine. So if you almost could cut that strip off and paste it in that category, that would give you a ninth hand to play in that category. Then the next line is one, two, one, two, which is repeating numbers. So that would be consecutive run. So that would give you the ninth hand and consecutive run. You also could maybe switch over to singles and pairs. I'm um, sorry. Excuse me, any like numbers with that because if you start pulling in jokers you could do all uh, one number and uh, switch over to like numbers you also could do um, addition hand with that uh, there's a lot of like numbers and addition hand so it could fall in that category too the next line line number three in singles and pairs um, that goes to three, six, nine. So you're getting the picture. We'll again visit that at another time in one of my other videos, but it's the point that it's an additional hand to a category. So try to remember to always look there when you're playing a certain category, there's always one more hand there. So yay for us, I'm super happy. We won the singles and pairs hand. We got 50 points for that. She would have to pay me a dollar because it doubles because she threw me my winning hand. If it doesn't double again for jokerless because it already is jokerless and that's why the value of the card of that hand on the card is already at 50 cents so I hope that makes sense um, everybody else is just gonna pay me 50 cents but Dottie because she threw the card tile to me she's gonna pay me a dollar let's look at everybody else uh, Marjorie was playing three four three four so I kind of pinned that on her right off the bat um, again, there was two hands I was looking at, line number six and line number four for her. And Quentin was playing four flowers. Like I said, they're kind of all over the place. He only had one exposure up. It was a little hard to figure out what he was playing. Um, but he was playing that two, four, six, eight hand, line number one. And Dottie was playing two, three, four, five, which is, um, I call that that simplistic hand. It's pong, 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 pong. And that was line number two. And she was playing it in two different suits. So that would be too big. We learned all about um, switching hands. And it was great to see learning about the 2023 category and singles and pairs. So we learned a lot. So we're going to continue to learn each week and build up our strength on the card. And within, I'm going to say, there's 10 categories. So within 10 weeks. We should really have this under our belt. And of course, you can move at a faster pace. And of course, I am also because I have to teach this to everybody. I don't have 10 weeks. So I'm literally probably going to learn it in 10 days. <laughs> so um, but tune in each week and we will go over each category and we'll talk about it. And I'll give you tips about it and how you can change hands. Also, we you see that when we play the game, how fast we're changing hands all over the place. So I'm super excited to have won the singles and pairs. That's a good start to the card for me. And um, real quick, I did want to mention, uh, also, I don't think I mentioned it last, start the dot challenge for yourself. And I'll actually put up a slide next class and show you what the dot challenge is. But I also have a video on my website to so go there and look at it. And then also play on I Love Mod. Use your code CB and practice and learn the card. They're great. They keep your stats on also all your winning hands. So you can see what hands you're playing the most, what hands you haven't played at all. So sometimes you kind of get in a rut and play a certain category, and this will force you to play in different categories. Uh, a long time ago, I realized I never played 369 because it's all the way at the right side of the card. And so then I taught myself that category to incorporate it and put it in my head. So good luck on your next Mahjong game, and I look forward to learning the card with you, and we'll see you on our next video. Bye, everyone.